how you consume it, how you see it, and definitely what my family is doing all the time. So, but you're here for this session with a good purpose. You want to give your boss a headache. I see the smile, I'm sure you're like, oh, you heard about what happened earlier, so you're here now because you want to give your boss a headache. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over some design practice for dashboards and reports, tool agnostic tips and tricks, and I'm going to have a little bit of fun doing it because I try not to take myself too seriously. So I like to start with a quote. And the reason I start with a quote, you ever see a presentation, someone puts a quote at the end, how often you really pay attention to that or it's on the slide. So, but this one kind of has a particular impact for me. So put it before them briefly so they'll read it, clearly so they will appreciate it, picturesquely so they'll remember it, and above all, accurately so it will, you, they will be guided by its light. Sum it up, make it simple, make it memorable, make it accurate, and everybody will be happy. So, and those are kind of things you kind of have to remember when you go to design reports and do development and, and try to display data. So, how many of you use something from this? This is a list of tools. Let me get a quick show of hands. Yeah, I figured everybody. So, this is really targeted, so it doesn't matter what you're using, but there are practices you can use across any tool. So, whether you're using Excel, Tableau, Microsoft Stack, and, and, and don't get me wrong, all these tools have their place. They're, they're all great, but there's no real standards on how, how we should display this information. So this is just going to be a good step in the right direction, and then you put your own flair on it. But I like to start with a carrot. I know I wasn't saying I'm going to get too technical, but dashboards and reports. This is a big misnomer. When people request stuff, they ask about a lot of things. And a lot of things, I don't want a dashboard. I don't want my dashboard to do this, 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 and this. Well, you know what? A dashboard really just has very few things on it, very high level. And depending on where they are in the organization, they have fewer things that roll up. At a higher level, it may have an indicator that says, oh, what's going on? And so the vice president asks the director, I don't know. I should have noticed this. And then asks the manager. And the manager goes to the analyst and says, OK, show me some reports around this data that are more detailed. Well. These dashboards can typically can drill through all the way down to the details, but at, typically at a high level, you want to keep it simple so that it's easy to understand. Reports, let's face it, we've all seen reports. We've looked at our bank statements. Those are reports of things that come in, tables and charts and graphs, and says, hey, look, this is your spending at McDonald's, and, and et cetera. So let's, get, let's start inflicting some bank. Uh, 3D is awesome. Who doesn't love 3D? How many of you use some sort of 3D in some kind of chart or graph somewhere? Yeah, yep. And, and the reason for this is because it's cool. Let's face it, it's eye candy. It looks great. So, 3D is awesome. Can someone tell me how much the four line sales are? A wine sales? About yeah. Seven, uh, close to 7,000, so between 65 and 7. Uh, 65 and 7. And what would you say the domestic is? Domestic is about 85. All right, about 85. Okay, that's good. So, but it, and it looks good. Now, realistically, these are whole numbers. There's no big tiers. It's actually 6,000 and 9,000. So where do you start? So when you look at a 3D chart, you start at the front, you start at the back. It doesn't even look like it comes up to the, the 8,000 line or the 9,000 line. This is a generated chart. This is the exact same data. I just switched it to 3D. So it looks cool. So if you had a target and you were identifying a target on here, you may make it look like you missed your target when you may have in fact hit your targets. So 3D is misleading. Plain and simple. 3D looks cool, it's got the wow factor, but realistically it is very misleading. Neon. Yeah, colors. Who doesn't like looking at neon lights and seeing the neon size? And they're great, and they get your attention. And that's both a good and bad thing. First we have to stare at it. Now here's a 3D neon chart. Oh, I see the faces. I know it's hard, right? What if you're trying to look at certain numbers on this? Some of these colors are overpowering. You know, back like pre-97 Excel, these were kind of the standard colors. I took off the red because the red was also strong too. 
But Lotus 1, 2, 3, we were talking about 20 years ago or so. Nobody knew. These were what we put in charts and their graphs. And they hurt, don't they? You stare at this long enough, it gives you a headache. So this is a good start, especially with the 3D. You can't tell where it's at. Plus, the lines aren't very clear. I mean, <laughs> we'll, look at a, we'll take it a little step back still. All right, we fixed it. Now we've got a flat chart. It's still very harsh on the eyes. These harsh colors are just really can drive a person crazy. And it's, if you think it's bad here, imagine on this laptop. That's why I'm not looking down there. I'm looking up here because I know what this is going to do to me. It's like looking into the sun. <laughs> so neon is blinding. So same data. We look for neutral colors, pastels, shades, and, and you try to keep it simple. It, it, this is much easier to read than this. This is the exact same chart. You see this is a big difference in the consistency there? Mm -hmm. Much easier to see. Very easy to forget this. Using things like red, not a good idea. Even though red, they may want it to be an indicator, you got to be very careful. You only put it in certain spots. To scroll or not to scroll. Now, you don't have to not scroll with your dashboard or your report. I'm not saying don't scroll, but it's really easy to lose information. Dashboards typically are single pane of glass. They don't scroll up or down, they don't move around. They're, they're, that's your information. Reports, you may have things such as drill downs. They have a little plus sign and you push it and it expands and you scroll down. But now I need to go back up to the top and look at what the title of this column was because I forgot what this value was. So I know that this column is this one, this column is this one, but when I scroll down, I lose the, top, the, the column titles. So you can lose information real easily with reports. Uh, recommended. So all of you have used drill through. How many of you surf the internet? I don't even really need to ask that, but this is called like it. Um, you can see that if you click on a hyperlink on a page, because you found something interesting, you're now drilling through to another web page. Pretty simple concept. I see a subject that I want more information about, I click on it, it's now presented right in front of me without me having to scroll. One click interaction. Real, real simple. And more ideal than drilling down and having to search for data. Anytime someone has to search for what they're looking for, it, it, it's a bad user experience when you're trying to find something and it gets a little frustrating. So drill through versus drill down. And scrolling can cause a loss of information. Now, sometimes you can't avoid it. Sometimes you have very long tables and big tables, and that's fine, depending on the level. Um, but any time you have an opportunity to click on a subject of some sort to pass through to something else, whether it's an Excel, reporting services, it doesn't really matter which tool, Tableau, they all can do it. Drill through versus drill down. Font size is king. Now, some of you were here earlier, you don't give it away. How many apples in the U.S. are there? Oh, no, U.S. about 4.25 or less than 4.25. Thousands. Four Thousands. 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 No, well, that's the thing. See that little tiny text up there? I see this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's hidden. This is tiny. Yeah. This is supposed to be, we made the number simpler so it's easier to read, but this subtext is minute, and a lot of people would miss this right off the bat. I mean, I, I wear, I'm wearing my, I have a hard time seeing it. Even my glasses on. I mean, how do you expect anyone else who's reading it to understand it? So, font size plays a big part of it. So, really keep an eye out for font size. If you want to avoid adding K next to the number so we know it's a thousand. The thing is, that's an assumed. It's an assumed, the assumed that they would know what that means. So you're assuming that everybody can consume your report that's used to numbers that have K at the end. So even though it may seem like common sense to us in this room. K I S S. How about three zeros? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but but never assume just that you always want to think is that and I I actually touched on that a bit later with analysis paralysis. That's a whole other thing that we we as developers and report designers suffer with constantly. And it, it, and then that's our that's our faux pas uh, that we go over. Scale, I love scale. Scale is great. I wanted a picture of the scale. Not sure it really pertains to this, but I just wanted a picture of scale. So 
Q4 sales volume for product XQL from Oracle and Microsoft. We're looking at Q4 sales. And at first glance, you're like, oh, we've got two to three on the side there. No, that's not really what I mean by scale. Yeah, we kind of shortened the bridge here. You know what I'm saying? We'll start at 2,000 and stop at 4,000. And let's see what's going on in, in that area if there's any trends. And obviously, you know, it looks pretty good, right? You know, everybody's trending up. And that's awesome. You know, managers are going to get their bonuses. You know, it, it really shows what's the performance. Well, realistically, this is really what that chart looks like. How are you trending up in Q4 when you haven't trended up since January? This is the exact same data. All I did was take off the first, the first nine months. I didn't do anything other than take the months off. Yeah, and, and you know what? It's not even higher than, than when we started. So scale, the range of time, or the range of values you're looking at, can really skew the message you're trying to, 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 to put forward. And some people prefer to do that. Some people <coughs> mislead with their charts. And I get that. They, they, they want to make the area look good. But uh, I think there's more value about airing your dirty laundry than, than trying to make yourself look good. In fact, this is more valuable to the company than it would be to say, OK, I just want to see Q4 from this range to this range between these dates when the sun is in this position. <laughs> and, Makes it a little, a little easier. I'm going a little fast. I know I'm talking pretty quickly. I'm going to slow down for this a bit. It's because it's cold. <laughs> gauges are not just for vehicles. I like this. You know, actually, gauge, gauges for uh, vehicles are great. I think they're an, a fantastic indicator. And you know, these things are really cool. Anybody use gauges? Yeah, I'm sure a lot of you do. Uh, and they have a wildness factor to them. And I, in my opinion, they're really only good at vehicles. You know, I know my speed, I know how fast I'm going, and I know how, if I have to change my oil, I know, you know when I'm going to run out of gas, I need to go to the gas station. So, so, let's look at some more familiar gauges. Just same thing, same gauges. Here's one from, from Excel, here's some reporting services. Now, does this really tell you anything? Yeah, the first quarter. Yeah, but you don't see really any trend. There's really no indicators. There's nothing that. There's no story. Yeah. You know, hey, the beginning of the year was great, but I can't really say much for anything else. Can't say why. Can't really see the trend because you're not looking at a scale of time. So you're saying fourth quarter, but when fourth quarter? So it, it's too narrow. You're missing information. Same thing with these indicators. These indicators, people love them. They look great. I, and I, I agree. They, they, they think they look cool. And it, it brings that whole dashboard perspective. When you think dashboard, you think your car. When you think your car, you think gauges. So some people use it for targets. But target when? How long? What system? You know, there's a, what threshold? What's the maximum? What's the minimum? What's the target? You're missing a lot of information. So there's actually a really, really, really good tool that you can do to replace your gauges. Absolutely, hands down. Everyone should use it. Bar charts. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the same thing, isn't it? You have a value and you have a target. Whether you're one column, two column, doesn't matter. You have a value, you have a target. If we take this and make it round, it's almost the same thing. But you can get a little bit more value out of it. Easier to build than a gauge. Still can have a while back for a little bit. There's some, but there is another thing you can use um, other than this. If you want a little more information, if you want like like what your ranges is, bullet graphs. Anybody use bullet graphs? All right, few people. Now, the nice thing about bullet graphs are it's the same thing as a bar chart. You got a value and a target, and then you know where you need to be. Whether this is the bad region, this is the satisfaction satisfactory region, and this is the region where I know we're going to be awesome no matter what. So it's literally a gradient in the background. It's clear, it's easy to read, and you can just come over here and see, well, revenue in 2005, year to date, we, leadership wants it to be over 250. In thousands, of course, because there's that little text there. 250,000. 
that's where the target is. But I know that I have to be over 150 to 225, it looks to be about. And we're satisfactory. Anything in that range is good. Yeah, we did hit our target, but we won't lose money or we're breaking even. And, and, and we're comfortable with that. So you have that threshold. So now you have a threshold. That's a very valuable indicator now. It's the same size as the gauge. Well, it's smaller than the gauge. And it's much easier to read. And it really tells you a lot more information. And you're specifying year to date. And you know that you've already exceeded your, your target for the year. So if this is like February, you're looking great. <laughs> so depending on whatever the date is. The date should be somewhere. But, you know, even though it says 2005. But. So, yeah, bullet graphs. You can make these out of our charts. In fact, I think there may be an option in Excel now for them. If there's not, it's literally just two bar charts on top of each other. One with the range in the back and one filling the color. You can, you can stack your bar charts, make them the same size, you get the same effect, and you know what, you're taking up less real estate and you have something cool and easy to read. Heat maps! I like heat maps because it tells me when it's going to rain. Or when how hot it is, or when I need the jacket. I don't, I'm Floridian, so anything below 70, I can think about. So, like in this room. <laughs> and there's, a, there's some scope to heat map. Anybody use heat maps at all? So, so heat maps, there is some value in heat maps. I think heat maps are great as an analytical tool, depending on the context you're using them. So, let's look at a few heat maps. Well, this. There's already a problem with this one. This one's 3D. This is looking at U.S. Olympic gold medals around the world. Well, just like scrolling, I now have to find my data. I have to sit there and drag it. I may miss something. You think? I, how often do you think I think about Australia? Maybe not that much. Might miss a whole continent when I'm trying to talk about something. <laughs> so you can lose value based on the size of your heat map, especially if it's in 3D. So anytime you have to search for your answer, not a good idea. Here's another one, pretty clean, sharp colors, you know, it's not, it's not too bad. This was the uh, election results from 2008. It's a clear message, it's picturesque, it conveys information. Uh, but there are a few things missing. So, in some of it makes sense, we got a bullet graph down here in the bottom with our targets. And we say, hey, wait a second, red looks dominant on here. Well, why is red look dominant over blue? But what, why is blue in the lead? There's data missing from this. So you have a narrow scope of data points you can actually show up on here. How many people know how many votes are each, each state is allowed to put towards the, the, the voting for president? You have 270 to win. Well, who makes up those 270? You know, California, I think, is like nine or something like that. And, if it's not there, there's data missing. Well, and that's good, and this is a good way to mislead people. I mean, as you can tell, politicians do it all the time. But, <laughs> but you, you, you can, this is a good option. There are good use cases for this. And being able to, and this is also a good shape, can, use case to put a drill through. So maybe you have a high level indicator on a state or location in the world. But I click on that state, and now I have everything I know that I'm looking at pertains to that state. So very high level. But there's more heat maps than just maps. Anybody confused about that one? Okay. This is a heat map. It's kind of confusing at first, give it a second. It's a lot of data. But let's say we have a region A through J. I could have put, probably put Florida, Georgia, New York on the top. And here are products 1 through 25. And I can see my sales volume by region, by product. Wait a second, everybody knows the problem with this one yet? Wait for it. We talked about it earlier. The total one. You're close. <laughs> Bottom right corner, volume in thousands. <laughs> so here's another good example where you can, you can hide small text. Limit. If it's really high, it's green. I know that product 25 in Georgia sold 
43,000 units. I know that product 25 in Florida only did 25,000 units. This is a very fast way to analyze a lot of data points in a map format. It could be rearranged. You can pick one of the examples I gave earlier today is I did time of day. We saw that shipping at 2.30 in the morning, or order processing at 2.30 in the morning, took in more, more orders than anyone else did throughout the day. So the 2.30 lot, slot of time on the left showed that there was a green line going right across all the red saying, hey, whatever these guys are doing, they're doing it right. So real clear, real easy indicator. This is just kind of organized in a nice, pretty way. So it can be a lot of data, not necessarily something for a report or dashboard, but definitely useful as an analytical tool. So it's very easy to do. In Excel, Excel does this. You highlight a range of data, you click conditional formatting, and you select a color range. And it does this automatically. You don't have to do any other additional development in the work. It's fancy. It does it for you. Yeah, but wouldn't this only work if you have like this nice arrangement where the colors kind of blend, easy, easy to see? Now, if you have data that's, you know, maybe you have like colors all over the place, then there, it's not going to be very representative, yeah, especially to a color line person. It could do flesh. Well, we haven't gotten color line. We'll talk about color line later. I talk about color line later. But this is again, this is not for really dashboard reports. This is more for someone to dive into the data. And yes, it doesn't. If the numbers are all over the place. It allows you to indicate key areas. So even though we see a red to green, I can say only show me greens. Only show me anything that has a value of 80 and higher. And it'll look a little different. And actually, I can switch over to one that. Oh, no. I'll do that at the end so I can get through the presentation. But yes, it, it, it looks nice this way, but there's actually clear delineation when you use it again in real data. This is just more of an example of another type of heat map. I used one recently actually with uh, my place about the type of cases that were being called in to a support desk and by what region. So I had the regions across the top and then had the cases on the, the bottom and we could say, well, India was calling in. 30% more of the time than anyone else because they're the only one that came up with a dark with a dark color. And you don't have to use these colors, there's options for them. Iconic perception. Full. Yeah, the glass is, could be full. Half full, half empty. Why a glass? I drink the glass. What's it do? I mean, is it water? I mean, there's so many questions. It, it really depends on the consumer, right? So you may understand it. You may perceive it one way, but they can do it another. So let's take uh, an everyday household object, thermometer, <laughs> temperature. So we're looking at temperature, nice 70 degrees, I like 70 degrees, that works. But there are other cases for a thermometer being used visually that, depending on who's looking at it, may imply a positive emotion or a negative emotion. For example, blood pressure. Well, it's a thermometer, <laughs> the higher it is, it should be warmer, right? Oh, wait, but the higher my blood pressure is, it's not so good. Or if it's colder and our sales values are down, we now have a negative perception. So we had a negative going up, now we had a negative going down. So it's really about who's looking at it. So have you ever seen like the picture of a person that fills up with depending on the water you drink? There's all kinds of things everywhere that there's iconic perception. Some cultures, some companies, Use icons differently. Ship sinking, maybe something bad. But if you're a salvage right. company, ship sinking is something good. <laughs> <laughs> so really, it's all about who's looking at it. The busier, the better. I like busier, better. This looks like your traffic on the way here from South Florida. No, really, it was much worse than this. <laughs> but we've seen this. Someone has a dashboard report and stuff, it's just got all, as much stuff as you can cram onto it. There's absolutely as much as you could do. We've got a chart, this thing's bright in the middle, it's taking up space. It's like, oh my goodness. So, what do you do about this? I mean, you've got dials that have no clear definition. You've got this little chart off on the side. Now, 
there's a ways to make this a little bit easier to read. One indicator over here tells me something's bad. We took away all of that red, green, yellow, blue stuff. Shows it making bad. Spark lines can show you trends over the period. Up, down, flat. I added these little ones on the right just to give you an example. Some people may prefer those than others. Uh, using up and down arrows for especially color blind. Uh, X's instead of circles. Check marks for. I typically don't like to highlight good because everything should be good. You want to highlight trouble areas. So you have far less indicators, takes up far less screen, drags less attention. You're not dragging attention to, you're dragging attention to things that people need to make informed decisions about. That's where their attention needs to be. If everything's working as it's expected, as it's designed, as the managers are, 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 are going through their day, they don't need everything scrutinized, because who cares if yesterday you were at 98% and today you're at 99%? Yeah, you trended up, but if you're always like that, why are we calling it out every single day? It's, it's too much information. It's information overload. So keep it simple. If something over here, we have performance oscillate at 48%. We're calling out 90% as green. We had a 65 and a blue. The less is better. You know, the one trouble area that that's below, the SLAs are set for a reason. If they're too low, they need to be erased. So here we go, 48%, it's below whatever the threshold is supposed to be, it's indicated. Don't need to worry about the other ones because there's not an issue there. Shouldn't be an issue there. Uh, chart, another little chart. You know, this is a little cleaner as opposed to this is as, kind of, as much as I could cram in here. I tried putting more stuff in here, but I ran out of room. <clears throat> I was thinking I'm going to put some stuff on the top. Did it make your font size really small? Oh, yeah. 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 On size. All right, so photography. What does photography have to do with BI? Like, a, I don't think any of you expected a photography lesson here at Single Saturday. <laughs> but it actually has everything. We're very visual people, right? And in fact, if we didn't have eyes, we'd probably a hard time getting here. So, um, and there's a lot of, and I know a lot of great developers who 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 do some great work and great stuff. But when it comes to visual presentation, for me, even when I first started, my dashboard just looks like that. I didn't know any better. I've, every example I've given you here, I've done, by the way. And, and, and it's fine because that's what you're, you're hearing. There's no guide. So photography lesson. We're going to go over the rule of thirds. So only really think of photography you really need to learn. Uh, rule of thirds breaks an image, a flat image into three quadrants. Top left corner, top right corner, bottom left, bottom right. On this image, your eyes go probably first went to this lighthouse. And there was nothing over here, so you probably went down to the base of that lighthouse and then off to the, sun, the sunset on the right. The top right was devoid of anything. So, given that we read from left to right, because this, this does apply culturally too, because if anybody leaves from right to left, your strongest point is going to be on your top right side. So the most important items you need to call out on any dashboard or report start at your top left. They then move along this top parallel line going across. They then start back again on the bottom left and then do the same thing. And then the opposite, if it's another culture, you're doing dashboard result for that. Your culture is different about reading. It makes it easier. If you look at movies, you look at pictures, even the movies that you watch in the theater, use this rule. Very rarely see things out of these quadrants. So once you got your ducks in a row, I just wanted to say that. And you can see as another example, we were calling attention first to this front left up. Then maybe we had some ancillary information about the duck, maybe like what it wanted to eat over here on the right. So as you move further down the line, you have your most important information on the left, and the more ancillary information on the right. So how does this apply to dashboards? Well, same thing. When you saw that last dashboard, I would guess the majority of you probably started at this top line and you worked your way across the screen. And then secondary, you saw this chart in the bottom left. And then you saw this ancillary chart on the bottom right. 
So as you see, we don't naturally, even though we're looking for data, we have some natural behaviors of just because we read from from, from left to right, we're going to start on the top left and work our way across. So take into consideration when you're designing something, especially that's going to be viewed, whether it's a report or a dashboard, you start in the top left, work your way to the right, keep it in line and parallel. You don't want to kind of come off these lines and then go forth. And you know what? I mean, you're looking at something 3D in a two-dimensional space or something that's in a two-dimensional space. You're looking at a monitor. Well, monitors have that same, those same lines. You look at it every day. So now for the part we all suffer from, analysis paralysis. Yeah, yeah, that looks like it hurts, doesn't it? Um, we're neck deep in data. We get familiar with it, we're reporting against it, we're doing, manipulating it, we're making charts, we're aggregating it. You're really involved with the data. Pretty sure though, that if, I were, if I'm that involved with the data and I make a report and I look at it and I think it's great, I got, Know, my everything's positioned right, I think the charts look good, I hand it to my manager, and, and this does not make sense. Why wouldn't this make sense? Well, we're neck deep in the data. They need the answers. What may make sense to us doesn't necessarily going to make sense to the consumer. So, a good rule of thumb is sit somebody down, could be on your team, could be anybody, and say, hey, can you tell me what this means? and see if you're getting the message across of what you're trying to convey. Because you may understand it because you have a relationship with the data, but the idea is you want to convey information to people that don't have that same relationship. The idea is you need to give them the answer so they can make decisions. You're working with the data, they're expecting your work relationship with the data to be valid so that they can make an informed decision on what you're doing. So. We're all neck deep in data. And definitely, a couple times I know it definitely made sense to me, and I thought it made sense. Uh, but consumers, not so much. And you've probably heard this where you've done the report for someone, you've given it to somebody, and it's like, yeah, you know, but it's not quite what I was looking for. That's, this is really what it is. It's like, they're not intimate with the data. This gives you the opportunity to say, hey, before I go any further, does this make sense? Because once you complete the product and do it, you're starting over again. It's easier to do a mock-up, do something simple, throw some data in it. doesn't have to be accurate to say, hey, does this make sense? Can you read this and understand what it's saying? And then if it does, go ahead, populate it, and push it out. Make it available to the world. And, and, and that's, this is just something really we all, uh, it doesn't matter, we all, I suffer from this regularly. Right? We all do. Especially if you work with data, whether it's from ETLs and SAS, the data might be we really do good relationships. I mean to change the thought on this because it looks better on my computer than it does up here. Uh, the good, the bad, the maybe. So now we're going to play a little game. I'm going to show you a few dashboards. And you're going to tell me, well, are they good? Are they okay? Can they be improved? Maybe we made it a little better. And these are the dashboards people have done. So I went on a Bing and I said, okay, show me dashboards. And license free, all that good stuff. So I can go ahead and post them in this presentation so we can see what other people are doing. That was very fun, by the way. So we're going to start with this first one. What's wrong with this? Well, we see bullet charts. We've got spark lines. It's too busy. Exactly. It's definitely too busy. There's too much on here. Maybe this could be segmented. There's, there's it's a in German. Huh? <laughs> it's also in German, yes. <coughs> you know what? I, I wish I knew what it was saying. Maybe I should remove it. <laughs> 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 Alright, let's go. Usually when you see Biker, I know it's from the Natural Works DBA. So. Uh, but yeah, there's, it, it's busy. I mean, they had some good things here. They had the right idea. But there's so much you're trying to cram on one page. Dashboards can't fit at all. It just, you just can't. Make multiple pages, change the subject, multiple tabs. You're presenting data. You have to search still. It's too busy. I have to find the information I want. They have good, clear indicators. Something's bad, it's red. That's it. Everything down here is red, bad, so we know it's red. Here's another one. Can any 
tiny ones. Read this one. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea until it was telling me either. And then I read down here, and it's like, I have a slider for interest rates. Wow. I don't even know what the interest rate is, but I can change it. So, and, and, and this is a dashboard about, well, the reinsurance and, and, and surplus of money and capitalization. Yes, there's all kinds of stuff out here, but I've got gauges. How awesome is that? These things look great. So this definitely has its pullbacker, but realistically, nobody's going to understand this. Maybe the one person who asked who wanted it, so that person can use this tool, but it, it doesn't have that cross functionality. You can give it to anybody, and they'll get it. Much less knowing what your interest rate is. All right. Not bad. Much better. What's wrong with it? Colors. Yes, colors. They're strong. They could be muted. And did you see this grading? I, I saw this earlier today. I didn't know this. I thought this only had two green dots on it. It's really a gradient based on population. So it's that context? Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's starting from white up to dark green. And there's these other little white, light green dots up there. And this just shows you when you, if you're using a heat map, gradient colors can get lost. Some people are like, well, if it's darker green, I know it's bigger revenue for that state. Yeah, but it, it, look, this is an example okay. of the So the, the data's getting lost. Alex, isn't it also kind of a good But one of them's at 100%, one of them's at 90%. One of them is at 80%. When does it turn red? So we don't know what the target is. We don't know. 7, no. 5, and 0 are red. Uh, 20 but, is but, red. But, but, for that, but for that measure, for that, for that exam, you, you have no way of telling what the target is. So they're like trying to figure out how many of the tests they need to do to be in the green, maybe? Yeah, there's not, yeah, how many were compliant, how many were measured, how many were controlled. It, it's, but here's the thing, they're also repeating data. I have the same thing that's mentioned here in the middle, it's the same thing that's on these bar charts. Right. But there's no clear delineation between them. So, and, how, and it has the number of patients. So, as far as like the dashboard's concerned, this could be improved. How would you improve upon that? Huh? How would you improve upon, uh, upon this one by having all the specific information? Yep. I was just going to say that maybe each of those vertical bars, they need to be labeled. I mean, yes, the labeling is off to the left, but is it clear to everybody that the first, you know, bar is compliant and the second one is metric? Why are they not super impulsive on the test? We also know we're missing stuff, too. There's a big scroll bar right there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how would you, well, when do you have to break this up? This is just too much. In, your, this is data overload, probably. Definitely a case for analysis paralysis. Um, and you have way too much. Even though it looks simple, you can simply define this in other ways. You, you can do charts and graphs, uh, but maybe you need to have that subsection of procedures cleared out. You definitely want to get rid of these and maybe use them as labels, like you said, on, on a chart. Here we go. Who doesn't like a good dial? Right? And it's got nice little text over here. Revenue in millions of dollars. Cool. Over when? How long ago? Um, sir. Yeah. <laughs> is, is this our revenue right now? I mean, it, it doesn't. It's not clear. Lack of information. We're using a. We don't have a target. Yeah, we have this red and green thing, but is that really a target? That's just saying, oh, it's good over here. It's bad over here. But where are we trying to go? Where are we going? Where's our roadmap? This one is a bubble chart on the bottom. Look at all those things on the label. I didn't realize it was a bubble chart chart at first until I looked at it a little harder. So this bubble bigger, but why? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> exactly. Now this was a good try. Uh, we had four casting units sold, but the colors are kind of harsh. It's a lot of lines. Could have probably been simplified and have a target. Maybe just a, an indicator. And these colors, look at these colors, the gradients, the things that make it difficult to see. It's not clear. Especially when you're looking, if, if you're presenting this to somebody, and especially if it's coming up on a projector like this, this isn't clear. This is not a dashboard that's meant to be consumed uh, at a meeting. 
And even here, so we have a, a stacked line chart, but again, it's not clear, so why not have a, a stacked bar? The stacked bar would have been at least a little clearer as far as to total volume, as well as how much each region has brought in over that time period. Just little things, even though this may look cool, it looks like a car's dashboard, the value's gone. And the expectation is that if I gave this to you, you get it right off the bat. I've seen a few of these before. Some people like them. And we can see a couple issues with them right, on, right away. Uh, 3D charts in the middle. We also have 3Ds accurate earlier. We have a gauge in the top left. Potentially could be a bullet chart. What else? What is that dome on the right side there? Uh, Krispy Kreme. <laughs> 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 uh, good point. It's it's another version of a gauge and or a pie, uh, but it's not clear. Uh, the text is too small. Now, you'll see these sometimes as executive dashboards, and these are opportunities to drill through. And it's fine to have something high level, but it should be cl a clear enough indicator to make you want to drill through. There should be something here that tells me I need to click on here because my attention is needed. I need to take action or I need to understand why are we don't do we not have enough headcount in the region? Do we need to hire more people because we're not able to get the product out the door fast enough? So there's all kinds of things you scenarios you can do this with. We have color indicators here with really tiny text that don't say what the colors mean. First quadrant has red. Yeah, that yeah, red stands out, right? That's your right. But then that's also that top left. Your eyes are going there first, right? They did follow the rule of three, yeah. right? Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. It's got, you're on that line on the top. This one's not too bad. The colors could be better, but not too bad. Here's an iconic perception, right? It's a little man being filled with green slime. Not sure exactly what, but at the same time, success index. All right, seventy-two percent of people were feeling happy or something. Uh, here's a bar chart. At least they said last thirty days uh, for the, the pie. Uh, a lot of times, people try to put too much information on the pie. I have a a mixed relationship with pies. I think in some cases they can be used, in a lot of cases they can't. But definitely, at least they it was clearly defined here. Hey, look, targets. We have a uh, bullet graph, or an example of a bullet graph. Kind of 3D-ish, but not, and again, not too bad. And, and then we have another one uh, just giving you totals, which isn't really a bar, it's just highlighted totals. Um, maybe a race waste of real estate. What about this chart here? What's this one mean? Bingo. I have one of the few cases you can use a red indicator. My network is down in Texas. People can't work. That's red. I have six critical major alerts coming out. That's red. I know my CRM application is now down. That's red. I know remote access is not working somewhere. Wow, hate to be this guy. <laughs> and here's some target information on the side. The colors are a bit dated, so obviously from an older system. But for the most part, this is a good example of using a heat map to get value out of it. They have these little line graphs, kind of like a bar graph. They took a bar graph and made it smaller, kind of like a, a bullet graph. Not too bad. It's better. I don't really think you need to call out that 91% is a little sliver of red on there. You could probably change the color of the icon when it goes bad, the color of the 100% where the, the percentage can change color. And then you have the systems indicators, which is all great. So this is a pretty strong dashboard. Uh, it's pretty linear. It's pretty clear. So, fascinating readings. Information dashboard line designed by Stephen Few. I highly recommend this book. It covers uh, some of the stuff we went over today, but it, it's for an industry that doesn't have very many standards as far as design is concerned. It's a pretty good place to start. And you'll find that as you do this more, you'll, you'll help set the standards for this. Uh, the visual display of quantitative information 
It's a little boring because it gets a little bit too much into the analysis paralysis field, but it's good about visually displaying data that you wouldn't really normally think of displaying. Super printers, thinking by numbers. Um, really, because thinking by numbers is kind of the new thing right now. Uh, it's just a series of stories of how people have taken their everyday numbers and just kind of said, hey, everyday things, we got all this data around us, but we're not looking at it. Uh, one good example a guy was really into wine. So he prints wine data for weather, location, rainfall, and time of year. He had about a 90%, 89 to 90% predictability of what's going to be the top wine. Going to be before wine tasters could even taste it. Because even when wine tasters can taste it, they still only had about a 50% success rate. So he was not a fan of the wine community for a long time. Uh, but it just gives you a good idea. If you think outside the box and you think about what's around you, how it can affect your data, throw it in there. Add it. Why not? If you're interested in photography, DSL are book from Tony Northrop, a great study in digital photography. I don't recommend buying it, only if you really are into photography. But there is a section on here with some links. Wikipedia, color psychology, and rule of thirds. Rule of thirds will have some more great examples on placement. And photographs, just when you hear the same photograph, change it out real quick. And color psychology, well, colors and fit with the mood. So you saw those harsh colors earlier. I saw some of the faces when you saw the green. Those are the kind of emotions you either want, you really don't like who's getting the report, or you, you want to avoid. Uh, things like certain blues promote relaxation, and uh, good examples in train stations, I think, overseas, they put blue light bulbs. It reduced the crime rate in the train station because it was a more relaxing atmosphere. It's also like painting your walls red, it's kind of a harsh room to walk into, it makes you a little upset. Uh, so it, a lot of colors you can take into consideration. Uh, especially, and there's also a website you can find about uh, color store colorblind. Uh, let's see if I can add to this before I upload it. But there are some colors that work well for people who are colorblind. Mindset for if you have people in your organization who are colorblind, change your indicators. You know, thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, a X, so anywhere there would be a red circle. So it, it could still be red, but it'll at least be an X for the people who are colorblind. We'll take that into consideration. So, questions? That's some good ones so far. I can go back to some neon charts, too. <laughs> you came to this session, you knew you were going to get tortured. No, I just like it. Pretty good. Yeah, it's interesting. It's a little bit outside the box. Well, we're working on a dashboard now, and it's like, <laughs> it's all get thrown up there, and it's like, oh, now let's do this, let's go back. And, one of the examples was uh, a, 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 a gauge. There was three gauges, and they were with a strip of green, yellow, and red. And two of them were green, yellow, and red. And one was red, <laughs> yellow, and green. And it's like, the red, it's like, it, it's looked look bad, but it was like 98%, which was good. Yeah. Because the good was this little strip over mm -hmm. here. It's misleading. Yeah. It's the context. Good case for a bullet graph in that case. Sure. Your target's up here, doesn't have, and green, yellow, red, I don't know where that came from, but it's harsh. Use red when you need to call it out. Like network down, that's, that's fine. Uh, but it doesn't need to be on everything. Any other people working on dashboards or reports or any feedback? If you have any questions, please. Email me, I can talk about this quite often.